Welcome back to the video. Today I'm in the woods. I'm in the south of England. I'm with my mate Lee. Lee knows all about mushrooms. So he's going to take us on a journey to find forage and hopefully cook up, maybe taste a few mushrooms. Let's see what happens. Let's go. Look at that. What have we got? So this here is a chanterelle. Let's go get some more. So as we're walking around, we're finding lots of different species of mushroom. This is one we've just come across. Right, Lee, so what was that red mushroom we just saw? So we just found a uh, beechwood sickener, which is in the Rusula family. Oh, what, a beechwood sickener? Beechwood sickener. Right. So it's a beech, it grows with, uh, with beech, uh, it's red, um, and it's the Rusula family. Most of them are edible, a lot of them are very, very tasty. But that one, when it's growing, when it's red and it's growing near beech, it's an indicator that it's a sickener. Right. So it'll give you a bit of a funny tummy. So that's why we didn't pick it. Yeah. And what's this one we just found right here? This At the bottom of this big beech tree. Big, big old beech again. This is a really lovely, it's called Plums and Custard. Um, Plums and Custard. Because if you go in and have a little look at the, the base, you can see why the colours of it. Not edible, but very pretty. Not edible, but very pretty. Yeah. Cool. So we'll leave that one right there. So I'm not a mushroom expert. That's why Lee, my good friend Lee, he's come along for the day. And he's just come to show me around, show me a few different mushrooms that are out there that you can eat. One mushroom that I'm quite excited to find is a sep. One of those big, fat, juicy mushrooms. But so far we're about an hour, maybe 45 minutes into our walk and we've not found any at all. But we'll see what happens. Hopefully we'll find some big seps. Well, just the thumbnail for this video, it shows that I did find one. But to be honest with you, I haven't found it yet. So let's go find that thumbnail that you just clicked on. And to be honest with you, I'm not super keen on mushrooms. I think it's the texture in the cooked mushroom that I really don't like. But I've got something in my bag that might make a raw mushroom that little bit more special. Let's see what happens. I've got a jar, I've got a chopping board, I've got a knife, but what's in the jar? You'll have to wait and see. Classic oyster, beautiful, really, really tasty. And we're just gonna pull it off like that. You leave the base on there, but it's only one, but it's very tasty. And you just, when you come to cook it, you just rip them apart. You should never really slice a mushroom, I don't think. You should always pull them. Same with the chanterelles. They just break apart nicely and you can just put them into your food like that. Beautiful. Nice. Let's move on. What I love about this ancient woodland are these old dead fallen trees that are left to rot and they provide habitat for other creatures. One thing I really like, I think it looks really pretty, is that moss. It's beautiful. This forest isn't managed, it's just a giant, huge forest and it's wild. It, you can really imagine this forest, this woodland, being just like it was hundreds, thousands of years ago. It's beautiful. Just come across these ants crawling along this dead tree. Have a look. I think they're I think they're European harvester ants. And then just by following the ants, I've realised that they've got a huge mound, a huge nest in here. Look at the size of that. That whole mound just made up of pine needles and probably millions of ants. Lee has just found a few more mushrooms. 
and I believe they're saffron and milk caps. So we got the pair here, which may look a bit odd and a bit gnarly, but these are so good. They have delicious in their name, Lactarius del deliciosus. Absolutely stunning mushroom, collected on the continent a lot more than they are here. In Spain and Italy, these are very sought after mushrooms, but we don't really think of them as as being that were it's kind of that edible here um, they're the lactarius family so um, that means a milk cap the common name of saffron milk cap they exude a saffron colored milk milky sap from their from their gills once broken as you can see I just break them and it's just oozing that sap out um, oh, wow. so it's a real good sign very very tasty and we've got another one just nestled in here they really like growing in between these grassy tufts oh there's one more there look as well okay. <laughs> That one's actually, that one's, that was kind of just about to go over, but it's a beautiful specimen. They look gnarly, but they taste incredible. We're doing well, but we still haven't found that thumbnail. Beautiful mushrooms. So Lee, what is this one? I don't think we talked about this one. No, this one is especially for, for Dustin to try. So this one is, um, this one is in the Rusula family. So one we talked about earlier, um, we found the, uh, the um, beechwood sicana, so the russula family. The common name is a brittle gill because the gills are very brittle. This one in particular, I think, is a russula bruno purpurea, which just means like brownie purple. Quite a, like, obviously, a very descriptive name. Um, but I want, I want him to just uh, to try it and just nibble it, but don't eat it. Don't swallow it, but just nibble it in your teeth. Quite nutty. Yeah. Quite tasty actually. It is quite nutty. It's not too bad actually. Much nicer than a than a cooked mushroom. So these are actually one of the one of the you know, not one of the only ones, but one of the finest mushrooms that you can eat raw. They actually taste really good in salads. There's one I was hoping this one was it, but there's a got a this it's very similar colour, but then it has a flush of a um a flush of purple down the stem. And it's actually it's actually <laughs> I'm laughing because he doesn't like it. I just spat it out. <laughs> <laughs> but um, there's one that I want to find him later, which is almost as hot as um, horseradish. So it's quite, f I, now I've told him obviously, he's gonna know, but it's quite good to do this. You give someone a purple mushroom, they're like, oh, that's really tasty. Then you find it again, and it's very hard to sort of see the difference in the stem. They eat that one, and then their whole face just blows up like a horseradish. Oh, Paul. thanks. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that one then. <laughs> But one thing I'm really grateful for that we don't have to worry about are things like bears. You know, in this country we can go out camping for however long we want and there's nothing really to worry about. Nothing's out there to eat you or to kill you. But there are things out there trying to kill you like ticks. Maybe not kill you directly, but give you a long-term illness that won't be very pleasant for the rest of your life. You'd expect them to just be on the end of these, these bracken waiting for a deer to brush past in order for them to jump off and get a free ride and then a free meal. Yep, in a seven day period, I think I, I peeled off, I, well, with tweezers of course, I peeled off 11 in seven days. That was bad. This is the kind of place you get them as well. So we just spotted some more mushrooms, oyster mushrooms. And you can actually, you can hopefully you can see on the, on the camera these are good, they're just about to go over, but you can see all of the gnats that are growing around, flying around it. So when you find oysters, it's always good to tap, tap them. That gets all the flies off of them. And then these are ones that you want to cut, just because the stems are quite tough. So these are beautiful specimens. Look at those, absolutely stunning mushrooms. So this is an orange birch belete growing with these birch trees here. Easily, nearly as good as a sep. Uh, this is quite a small one, but I like them. If they, if they open up too much, they can get a bit squidgy. So they're actually really good when they're small like this. Uh, it looks almost phallic, but it's, they, can, they can have stems on them this sort of size. They can grow enormous. So definitely a worth, worthwhile edible. 
Oh look, more chanterelles. Beauty. That is a chanterelle. Beautiful. So these are perfect for this sort of size. It's a common, net, a common name for them is your roll, which just really refers to the small, the smallness of them. But these are beautiful in a in a pasta or whatever. Very tasty. Wonderful. So all the small ones. It's, it's quite important when when you're out mushrooming to try and not to get too. Uh, to, to not try to get too, um, uh, what's the word, greedy, because you can quite often pick them while they're still tiny. So we have a look at these ones here. These are quite small still. Yeah. And I often see people trying to pick them. So what would you do? Would you would you leave those for next time? Yeah, or exactly. Would you pick them? Give that a week with some rain, and that will be easily that sort of size in a week. Well, what so, like the size of the larger ones we found? Yeah, exactly. So it's very important, it's, it, it, with all real mushrooms, I, I think, if they're really tiny still, one, it's important for identification because you can't always, unless you're, you know what you're talk, you know, know what you're doing, you can't always identify them until they're fully out. But also, you're going to triple, quadruple your yield if you wait. Um, so the so the trick is, don't pick everything. Always leave a few. Always leave a few. Right, we found another one. What's this? What's this one, Lee? So this is quite an important mushroom because um, it's called a blusher. So it, it's in the in, it's in the family of the amanita. So they contain some of the yummiest, but also the most deadliest mushrooms known to man. Um, so it's the same family as a death cap, the destroying angel, a panther caps, which is not necessarily as deadly as a death cap, but the panther cap looks very similar to this. This is a blusher, um, and the reason it's called a blusher is because it, if it's been eaten by uh, bugs or you, you bruise it, it will blush slightly pink on the stem and on the um, and on the cap. So you can, I'm not sure if you can see it on the camera, but there's a very slight pinky blush to it. Uh, so this, these are a very good mushroom to, 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 to learn, not only because it's in the most deadly family, so it's, it's always important to learn the, the most poisonous mushrooms first, I think, before looking at edibles. But it also, it can, in, in wetter conditions, grow in enormous numbers. So it's definitely worth uh, picking if you, if you can. Right, so one mushroom, fungus, that I do know is called an artist's conch. I know this from my bushcraft times and this is one of them. These are great for fire lighting, you can use them. There's a layer inside them which is great for uh, landing a hot ember on. So it's a bracket fungus, and you normally find them on dead trees, quite often beech trees. Very similar to the horse's hoof fungus, which gives you the layer of amadou, that fine, suede, almost fibrous-like layer, which is great for fire lighting. So for those interested, check out Lee, have a look at his Instagram, I'll put a link below. He does all sorts of foraging, cookery, cooker over fire, pretty cool stuff, check him out. Oh my god, there's saffron milk caps. There we are, saffron milk cap. Twins. Beautiful. Beautiful. Have a look at that. The chanterelles are back in the car, they're in another basket. 
We'll show you the whole haul at the end of the video. So what you do now, you're just trimming off the, the dirt. Yeah, just that last bit. Because the problem is, if you fill up your basket, then it's um, it can obviously cover all the other mushrooms in your... And I guess a lot of the dirt can end up down in amongst the gills. Yeah, it's much harder to clean them at the end of the day. So time spent trimming now saves you endless hours at home. And actually, you know, when you're mushrooming, you know, I quite like living by the motto of waste not, want not. Um, and usually what I would do is certainly with seps, is I take them home dirty with the bases on, which a lot of people are a little bit like, why, why'd you do that? But all these bases, not this in this amount, I think, but with seps, I certainly do this, do all the trimming at home. So when I'm uh, dehydrating them, I slice them all up and all of the bits that are kind of, you know, all the, all, all the, all the scraps, the, all the scraps and gnarly bits. I actually salt down and make a, a sep chop. So it's like a, a sep ketchup. And it can actually be done with any 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 mushroom that's edible. Um, so, you know, in- You heard that, a sep ketchup. Sep chop. <laughs> sep chop. <laughs> uh, so we'll, we'll show that on another video because that stuff is divine. And that's just salted down. It's a very old recipe actually. It predates any kind of ketchup because our modern idea of ketchup is this thick kind of gloopy, you know, tomato based sauce, which is obviously our classic tomato ketchup. But a real ketchup so actually much thinner, much kind of more saucy than a, than than what we think of now, the stuff you get in the in the squeezy bottle. So a ketchup is a or a catsup, it's two different names for the same thing really. But you can see on the base of there, there's a tiny little baby. Very cute. So I'll put that back. He might well grow into a bigger one. And um, yeah, so a ketchup is actually originally a much thinner sauce than our modern, modern Heinz thick tomato -y sauce. Other brands are available. You can see why these are actually a really good mushroom to eat because they've got a good crunch to them. Mm. Quite a nuttiness. A very, very tasty mushroom. That's why you, you don't want to get them with the older specimens, those ones over there. The ones that have really opened up, we've left them because they've gone over. So they've, mo as soon as these, uh, these mushrooms open, they're going to be releasing their spores. But these beasts, there's no point really picking them unless you were making a sep chop or, or, or mushroom ketchup. Um, so it's just best to leave them. Um, you want them when they're nice and tight and crisp like that. Nice. So if they crunch when you cut it like that, then they're good. This is a fair old haul. That is a good haul. I'm coming, I'm going, I'm going mushrooming with tr uh, Dustin more often. Hey, I found this patch. And he's got a keener eye than me almost. I found quite a few of them today yeah. actually. Well, there's, we need a few more. I've got a feeling we, we're close to some more chanterelles, so. More chanterelles and then I'll hopefully end up with the big boy of our mushrooms. Our goal of the day is a seps. Big fat sep. Nice juicy one. We'll get there, we'll get there. That is absolute pure perfection there. Oh, uh, Lee, I dropped it. <laughs> Sorry. 